There used to be something that people did back in the um, times of war. When America was at war with the Indians over America, over land, they would, um, after they defeated Indian tribes, what they would do is they would take the children, right, and they would have the they would set schools up on the reservations or have the children come to schools around white people. Sometimes they would do this. And the whole point of doing that was to um, make them more like Caucasians, right? Incorcate them, as we say in the state of Mintel. Those of you who are searching the dictionary right now, looking for that word, you're not going to find it. That is a word that came to me. Yeah, you know, Like I said, just flashed in my head, incorcated. It came to me so clear that I thought this word actually existed in the dictionary, right? I didn't make it up. It just came to me, inculcated, meaning that certain people, right, are given a Caucasian mindset or mentality. It is implanted in their heads, usually at a very young age, an impressionable age. This, as I said, was happening to um, little Indian kids. You know, where they had that type of mentality implanted in them. It happened in all countries where even in England, because they learned, America learned that from England. England would do that with the Indians, the East Indians, too. They would invite, like, a lot of the future, um, the young children to come over to school in England. They would go to school in places like Oxford and places, you know, university and, you know, get thoroughly inculcated mentally with the ways of the Europeans, right? even though you're East Indians or Caucasians as well, but the mentality. They would implant the mentality in their heads. Same thing with the so-called Native Americans here. They would implant that mentality. So then when those kids grew up, they became uh, uh, adults, they wouldn't look at, you know, what happened to their people or look at white people, anybody, as, you know, enemies. They would be more relatable to these people. Same thing happened in slavery. Right? Same thing. Though we didn't get a education per se, such as reading and things like that in slavery, because you know our people were you know slaves weren't allowed to read at that time. But they, it started when the um, slave masters would take children <clears throat> and uh, bring them into the house and have them living around the master. Right? And probably molest them and do all kind of other stuff. But mess their heads up pretty much. They would use the children. Against the older people, have them spying on them, listening to conversations. He would inculcate the children to be on this side, to work against the older people. What they talking about? What they doing? All right. Fast forward to today, in your educational system, you got black people who are being inculcated every day in the educational system. What do I mean by that? Do I mean that? Uh, it's a bad thing to go to school and get educated. No, I don't mean that. But when it comes to something technical, right, something that's universal, you can't inculcate that. You can't give that to a person with a Caucasian mentality. That's a universal skill. Notice our people don't really go to school for things like that. When they get into the universities, very few of our people go to school for the technical things. And they purposely push those uh, careers away from our people because you can't incorporate, you can't implant a mentality in the people based on that. Though they try because you notice before you could get your college education, you usually have to go through all kinds of psychology classes, psych classes, uh, um, history classes. You have to go through all these things. In other words, you have to be trained how to think or you have to Respond and give the answers they want you to give, or else you don't get your degree. Right? They give you all these classes, psych classes, this kind of class, this philosophy, or whatever they give you. Uh, 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 social studies, things like that, just to implant your mind, to get you thoroughly inculcated, to get you accepting the philosophies, the ideals, the ideologies of Caucasian people. 
That happens. Happened in Africa, too. Oprah Winfrey built that school over there for the girls, right? Notice not for the boys, right? Because you got black people who sponsor educations like this. Not for the boys, but for the girls. Why? Because girls are usually more easily um, malleable. They're more open to what they consider or perceive to be progressive, uh, you know, behavior or or education. Women are more open to that than boys. Boys tend to be more uh, aggressive. They tend to be more disobedient toward that. They tend to be more, um, what's the word I want to use? They tend to be more, um, you know, rebellious. That's what I want to use toward that. So you teach the girls because the women will, you know, if you control the women and a group or race or people, then you will eventually control the people because the women end up raising the next generation of children, right? Hand that rocks the cradle is the hand that rules the world. So it works on you to thoroughly inculcate the women first, right? The black woman was first, of course, you know, still heavily inculcated. What's the first thing a black woman constantly throws at you to show that she's progressive? She said, I'm an educated black woman. I'm educated. That's the first thing she throw at you, right? She don't say she's a skilled black woman. She says she's educated. There's a difference. A skilled black person would be a doctor, somebody who does something technical, right? Skilled in technical things like engineering, medicine, law. That's skilled people. Right? Or when you talk about skilled people in as far as building trade, some electricians and things like that, technical things, real things that you have to give brain power to, that's skilled labor. That's skilled professions. They go instead, our people are made to become or open up to education, educated, a.k.a. trained. That's what they really mean when they say educated or what we call inculcated. You don't go there to take the technical things. You go there to be programmed, right? You go there to be programmed to have your natural intelligence or your logic scrambled up, burned out, and replaced with an artificial form of intelligence, inculcated. I put the picture of Wiz Khalifa up there I said because it's a new generation of children that are being inculcated today. You look at them. Am I lying? Look at them, right? You look at them and they're being heavily inculcated. You listen to their speech. Listen to what they're doing. Look at how, look at the children, younger and younger, they sound like little Caucasian children, right? So that's being heavily played out. So when you are talking about experiences that you have as a people and you're trying to impart wisdom on your children, you're not going to be able to be, uh, you're not going to be all that effective because your children have been inculcated. They are talking to them about the black experience now, what happened to you in this country or the past or, you know, why you should be looking forward to the future and, you know, uh, uh, being proud of your race. That's about, as, that's about as foreign to them as telling a little white kid. Talking to your children right now, young black children today and teenagers and even in their early 20s about the struggle of black people is like talking to white kids. They're not going to get it. They, they, they got the same mentality as white kids. <clears throat> They're doing the same things, right? Somebody fell asleep at the wheel. Somebody fell asleep at the wheel. Somebody neglected the children and allowed others to step in and inculcate them, train them, train them to be black Caucasians, right? Young black Caucasians, skateboarding, tattoos, you know, drugs. That's White behavior. That's white rocker behavior. Tight pants. You see the people I put up there? You see it. Bad music. Noise. Right? That is an inculcated culture. That you, the new black youth or the young black generation are inculcated. And it's subtle. It's subtle. And at one point it was subtle. And now it's become, you know, just outwardly just just really you know you know bigger than it's becoming larger than life you see it more and more every day 
We're going to discuss that tonight. I am the intellectual Nubin Minkares, and this is State of Mintel Radio, and tonight we're talking about the inculcated black youth, right? Your children are not going to recognize you anymore. They're not going to recognize anything about you. Their memories are being erased. Right now, I'm letting you know that. Their memories, their genealogy, their thought process is being erased purposely, right? Eraser, erase, erase, erase your race, erase. How do you erase a race of people? How do you start? By erasing first their memory, right? You can't destroy all of them, so what do you do? You erase their memories, right? You erase their memory. You erase any uh, uh, any uh, idea, any way of thinking that connects them to the past, that tells them that they're different, right? You start to erase that by giving them a new philosophy, giving them a new outlook. Though it's not real, though it's artificial, though it's not them, you give them a new philosophy, a new outlook. And you promote this progressive because, as I said, girls are the first ones to accept what is supposedly progressive. The black woman will accept the first thing that she considers to be progressive, right? And then she got to convince the black man that it's progressive. Like I said, he's rebellious, right? That's how they worked on him during slavery. Went to the woman, and the master talked to the woman, who then talked to the man and influenced him. She made him stay. By getting pregnant on the plantation, you know, the master made sure that they got the women pregnant. They pushed it because they knew it helped in two things. Number one, that the, they would hope the slave or the black man would become sentimental to his children and would stay on the plantation, wouldn't try to escape, right? And he would sometimes try to keep the children together because he knew that the man would stay and give them some sort of semblance of family because then it would tie him to the woman that was there. She would talk to him and convince him to stay. So he would have a harder time running off and taking a whole family with him. Right? He worked on inculcating her first. Fast forward to today. Right? Young black girls who accept the black man or the so-called black male today with his pants off his ass, with tattoos all over his body, telling it's sexy for him to have piercings. Because that's really what they're doing it for. They're doing it because the first ones to start doing that was your black woman. The first one who was inculcated was the black woman. As I said, permanent her hair. Starting back. Because sometimes, don't think it's always the white man that comes in and inculcates our people. Sometimes he sends black people to do it. Sometimes he uh, uh, inculcates the mind of the black woman to go and poison other minds of black women and black men. He did it to Madam C.J. Walker. She made the hot comb. Obviously, she was inculcated to make the hot comb come up with that invention so that the black woman would press her hair and perm her hair out to look like white women. She said that you're wearing your hair like this would be progressive. Prior to that, the sisters was trying to take care of their hair, you know, and wear their hair natural to take care of what they had. But she said, well, I got a better thing to do. We got the hot comb and, the, you know, this and, you know, do your hair like this. Because this looks more progressive, right? Had them burning their hair out, straightening it, putting hot combs and chemicals in your hair. Whoever came with that or the ones who um, focused in on that, those are people who are thoroughly inculcated. So much so that they'll damage you. They'll damage your hair. They'll put poison, lie in your hair, chemicals in your hair just to try to get you to follow the image of someone else. People who are a totally different race than you to create, to make you into artificial people because that's what it looks like when other people do that to their head. So, like I said, they went to the woman, and who was the first one in this society? The, um, the ones who started wearing the clit piercings, the nipple piercings, the lip piercings, it was the black woman. It wasn't the black man, it was the black woman. Now you see young black kids, young black girls with the nipple piercings, the clit piercings, the um, nipple, all that, the lip piercings, piercings all over the ear. That's how it started, right? And a lot of people say, oh, it's an African thing. That's that's African. They did that in Africa, right? Well, let me tell you something. A lot of your Africans are, have been inculcated. 
Don't 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 go don't be fooled by the light skin and dark skin thing. A lot of them are black Caucasians. A lot of them have been inculcated. Right? Why do you think the white man, if you notice, he feels very comfortable and all the other races people, they feel comfortable coming amongst the Africans, living in villages with them. The white man been doing that. He's been inculcating them. The black, the African woman been screwing the white man. They've been laying up together. They've been in cahoots together. Go over there to Africa or go talk to them African women over there. You'll see what I'm talking about. So that obviously tells you that the first woman, the first person who opened the door to this inculcation of the mind was your black woman. Right? She got the black man today, young black man today, telling me, I think it's sexy if you pierce your, your um, nipple or you walk around with your pants off your ass or you tattoo yourself up. She said, I think that's sexy. Notice she's not telling him not to. I always said a black woman could end all the stupidity in a black man today by refusing to be with him, the majority of them, right? And then I said, too, a lot of it has backfired because now the black woman is being promoted through his thorough inculcation, inculcating, he's being promoted with the white woman now. Look at your picture I put up. Where's Khalifa, right? Who is he with? Amber Rose, she looks like a white woman. Kanye West, who is he with? Uh, uh, Kim Kardashian. Notice they pushing that, the black man with the white woman, right? Not with the black woman, but with the white woman. It's been a month of Sundays since you see black men and black women together on any magazine other than Ebony. What has more? Uh, what has more uh, um, reach in the media? Obviously, the white media controls all those images of a biracial uh, couple and mixture. That's in, that's working to inculcate the black man's mind. When they show you videos from rappers who got girls who are uh, mixed race or white looking, right, and over black women, what is that telling you? That these men have been inculcated. They have the thoughts, the ideas, the philosophies, the wants, the desires of white men, of white people, right? It's in their head. They don't think for themselves, right? It's like a mental calcification of the mind, of the brain. There is no outreach or no connection to the DNA or the genetics or the memory of who we are that's been erased. It's very, it takes time to erase it. But if you do erase it, you don't have to worry about people or these people later on. They'll erase their race out of existence in time if you inculcate them, if you take away all of their memory, if you wash their brains with lie, beliefs, I mean to say. If you wash their brains with that, if you tell them, you know, Oh, uh, we all the same, we all human, we all one people, this, that, and the third. No matter, forget about what happened in the past. Forget about all that. We all the same now. What happened from now to then? What, what, what changed that? Did behavior change? Did attitude change? Who said we all the same now? How is it that we went from not being the same to being the same? How did that happen? Who decided that we all the same now? It was a time when they would say we wasn't the same. The white man would say we wasn't the same. Now all of a sudden we the same. Even in saying that, that's racism. To lie, to deny that we are different, that's racism. And we don't even see that. When you think people think this progressive to teach that we all the same type of people, they think that's progressive. It's not. That's racist. Because what you're telling people is that they have to deny that which makes them different in order to fit into what you consider acceptable. The black woman has to deny how her hair grows, the perm her hair out, to fit into what you think is exact, acceptable. She has to talk a certain way, act a certain way, uh, think a certain way, be educated a certain way in order to fit into what you feel is acceptable, to feel like as though you know we all the same so that you, get to, so that you can relax. Because what you're really saying is you can't accept differences in people. That's racism. See, a person who really... Does who is not racist or who is not trying to inculcate you, they're going to tell you, well, I know you're different, but I don't care. You don't never see that. The people will tell them, we all the same, we all in it together, we all the same. They lying, they racist. 
These are the people that go to work on inculcating you. They go and go to work on making you acceptable or making you uh, 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 fit what it is they feel uh, uh, would make them comfortable around you. People are going to do that by nature, right? People are going to do that by nature, especially when they see you as beneath them. <clears throat> what do I mean by that? If in this society you was always promoted as being beneath other races of people, white, whatever, when they, they get around you, they get this mentality. They get this big brother, big sister mentality like you're their black friend. So now they got to work on civilizing you or, or schooling you to the world or sharing their so-called progressive ideas with you, right? They get that big brother, big sister mentality. They start to talk down to you because they've always been promoted in the society that you're beneath them. So they start to inculcate you with their ideas. They start to infect you with their beliefs. The minute you start thinking for yourself, you're wrong. Minute you start having an opinion or an idea about yourself, or uh, you for your people, oh, uh, you know, it bothers them. You're racist. But they, you know, so much so, show you how inculcated the so-called black man and black woman have become. When you see somebody like myself who does a broadcast like this, you'll get your inculcated people, your people who have been scrambled in the minds and given a Caucasian mentality. They'll come out against this kind of talk. They'll be like, oh, why he got to talk about race? He racist. Can you imagine that? That's straight from the mind of a white person. That's straight from the mind of an inculcated person. A person who, and they'll say, oh, well, you know, this guy, Mencare, he made up a word. He made up a word. You understand? He made that word up. Well, <laughs> um, it does make the word make sense. Hell, a white man made up words, but you don't think of it. You think of it as uh, uh, he has the authority to because you've been inculcated. The minute a, a so-called black man does it, he's wrong. That's not a real word, but you never say if the white man comes in the dictionary, he puts a word in the dictionary tomorrow. Like he, he's, he's done that over the last few years. He's put new words, and a lot of y'all haven't noticed. He just puts them into the dictionary and then incorporates them into the language. Next thing you know, it's a word, and y'all don't say, oh, he made that up. You just start using the word. Because you're used to him being the authority over you, the author, the one who tells you what to say, how to think, what to talk, what to do. Like, for example, I was getting this thing on Facebook uh, where, I, you know, I type in capital letters. I type in capital letters, and because I type in capital letters, you had Negroes up there talking about, oh, why are you screaming? Why are you yelling? You know, and, edit, and uh, typing etiquette, it says that typing in capital letters means that you're screaming and shouting. Typing etiquette, a.k.a. the white man said, because I'm typing in um, capital letters, a rule he made up that I'm yelling at people. When it makes no sense, you can't even hear my voice. I just like typing in big letters. But those are people who are inculcated. They were swearing up and down. I got that from a lot of people. Why are you yelling? You know, why are you screaming at me? That don't even make sense. That proves that our people are not thinking. That's what happens when you become inculcated. You stop thinking and you start reacting. And this is not even about the neutronoid. Forget the neutronoid for a second. This is about the people who have been thoroughly implanted with an artificial intelligence, with a memory chip in their head. And I don't mean a chip implanted in your head. I'm talking about a memory chip, i.e. your educational system, i.e. your religious beliefs, i.e. your philosophies, the books and the information that you consume. These people had these things shoved in their face because they cannot think. They have been inculcated with a philosophy already, an ideology that they try to lie and say is their own, that they try to make believe that they chose on their own, but you didn't. You were pointed in that direction. Everything in this atmosphere, in this society, your way of thinking, your mentality has been inculcated. I don't care what it is. It's all from the white man. The black man hasn't thought on his own since at least five, 6,000 years now. Black men and black women have not been thinking on their own, you know, without the influence of white people for five to 6,000 years. And I can say that with a short, most assuredly. You understand? I can say that with assurity. I don't care what you call yourself, Muslim, 
Christian, Israelite, the fact that you call yourself that shows that you have been inculcated. The fact that you belong to a religion or spirituality or a so-called African or Moorish culture shows you've been inculcated. Because I, I know I seem like I repeat myself when I talk about these things, but I have to drive it home. All these things that we have been ingesting and these things that we're living out come from the Caucasians. All these names, all these identities, all these philosophies that seem to go nowhere in circular form. See, that's what happens when you're inculcated, when you're given the mentality of a submissive thought and a rotative way of thinking. You're going to constantly move in rotation in circles to where it's going nowhere. And a lot of our people, they do these things constantly every day, and they say, oh, well, brother, I'm conscious. I know I'm conscious. No, you're inculcated as well. I say because you'll find the black, the blackest Caucasians in the conscious movement. You'll find some of the blackest Caucasians. You know, because that whole thing of sitting around and reading books, consuming book among book. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with reading, but that whole thing of consuming books and consuming books and no action coming out of that, no type of anything coming from that, or no intelligence being built up, no logic being built up, no time where your brain is working to generate thoughts, future thoughts, new thoughts, where your brain is not working, you're not thrown into the world and being forced to generate new thoughts or open your mind to receive new thoughts because you're having it inculcated with information. You're having your brain downloaded and filled up with information from Caucasians to basically get you following out a menial lifestyle. That's being done purposely. They See, they don't read all the books they write. They don't read those. They don't read the books they write. The majority of the books these people write, they don't read them. They they write them for other people. Don't believe that they read their adventure novels. They don't read their information books. They don't read their philosophical books. The most they might read don't don't the most the most they might read is one or two lines or something. Don't be fooled by that nonsense in the movies that you know where you see white people sitting down reading books and 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 taking in information. They don't do they don't do that. You know how you know they don't do that. You know how you know it's false that they made that up. Because these are the same people that are coming up with videos and uh, uh, this this type of thing for dummies, uh, this for dummies. This, who are they making that for? Why are they making information videos? Why are they making video books? Why are they spending so much money on movies? Because they don't like to read. They don't like to read books. They tell you to read. Right? They make all these things because usually all the things that they tell you to do, or send you out to do. They've already, they've already done that already. They've been stopped reading. Their children been stopped reading. So they get you, a push you and the conscious groups to read their stuff. That's why they'll make things that interest you, like conspiracy books, because they always know they got conscious buffs that want to read that stuff. They'll make conspiracy books. They'll make metaphysics books because they know they got a market for. They'll create a market for that. They don't read that stuff. They don't believe that stuff. The stuff they read and believe in, you they don't they don't put on the shelf. You understand? The stuff they read and put on the shelf, the stuff they read in private, they don't share. They don't share with you. They don't put that in the library. They'll have you know how you know how they do that. They'll have like one copy of the book. Or you ever hear that when they have three or four rare copies of a book? Right, your elite. I'm not talking about your white trash, but they don't even read it all. Majority of them don't read it all. But I'm talking about your elite, rich white people. They'll have a couple of volumes of a book, right? And it's a book that's very expensive because it's in limited edition. It's not really printed. And they'll keep it in their library. And they've read that book, you understand, maybe once or twice. They don't consume information. They go places and they explore. And they allow themselves to experience things and develop an idea or intelligence in their way of thinking. That's why they such they're the biggest philosophers now. Everything out their mouth is philosophy. Everything out their mouth is theory. Because they go places and explore things. They don't sit around reading a bunch of books. You know, when Dr. Sabi said, you know, I don't read books, you know, he goes out and he actually, you know, explores these things. He goes to places and puts compounds together. He does experiments. Man's a scientist. He does experiments. He puts compounds together. 
You had a lot of Negroes hated on him for that. Oh, we mean he don't read no books. I don't believe he don't read no books. I got that too. I don't believe you don't read no books. You had to read some book from Timothy Leary, some white man. Because the person who told me that is obviously inculcated mentally because he just can't get the white man out of his mind. He can't think that no uh, uh, intelligence is going to come independently to us. What does that say? We got a lot of uh, uh, people who are subliminally inculcated, and you don't know it. Every day you run into these people. Every day. Every day we come upon these people. They're the ones that are uh, making your music, a.k.a. the noise that you listen to. Right? They're the ones that are giving you the same ideas in your head that want to be like them. Right? They're using these Negroes, these young ones, to push that inculcated mindset in you. That's why they get them out there. Right? To pass a lifestyle. When they show little Wayne with a bunch, with tight pants on, tight leopard skin pants on, and his underwear out, and, his, and, and, and tattoos all over them, stuff, that's how they want your son looking. Right? When they show Nicki Minaj with, uh, uh, with blonde wigs on her head and, and talking about she got voices in her head, roaming and some demons talking to her, they want your daughters bugged out. They mind like they're talking some schizophrenic madness. They want your children listening to that. They want your daughter talking about she got she came home and got voices in her head. They want your children like that because their children are like that, inculcated. And y'all listen to this. You look at these people. If you are not outwardly acting like these people, you are accepting their philosophy every day. You don't think for yourself anymore. I said our people don't make real music no more. Notice that? Our people don't make real music anymore. We don't stand up for nothing anymore. We don't have nothing that differentiates us from anybody else. We all the same now. That's what that you know, the young generation, we all the same now. You know? I'm not saying and I'm not promoting racism here. I'm not. I'm promoting racial individuality because everyone should be free to have be uh, uh, individual racially, have their own set culture or set way of thinking that they developed on their own. Nobody should be forced to be inculcated with your training or a.k.a. your educational system. But we open ourselves up for that every day when we don't educate our children. You open yourself up. To, um, to have your children come home to you talking about they want tattoos all over themselves, they want to pierce their nipples and their private areas and things like that, you open yourself up to that. That's what you send your children out into because you have nothing for them. You have nothing for, for them that's progressive to move forward. So they look to escape away from you. They look for what's progressive. And if they what's progressive now, like they push into in New York, is this new kid, the new rapper ASAP Rocky. Right? New young inculcated because they start with the young ones. They put them out there. They put them on talk shows, TV shows because they want them thoroughly exposed to your children because they want your children acting like that. They want your children acting like their children. And they got to use a black Judas goat to get them like that. They got to put a young one out who is uh, hungry for money, hungry for fame, looking to quote unquote make it. Right? They use them. They use them to steer your children the wrong way, to have your to have a young generation of lost people, to thoroughly inculcate them. The way they bring in strange people home to you to your house, talking about this my new friend or my new girlfriend or whatever. You understand? This is what they bring in home. This mentality. There's no more judgment because these new people who have been thoroughly inculcated teach against judgment. They teach against judgment. You're not supposed to judge anything. You're not supposed to decide anything. You're not supposed to think anymore. You understand? That's what they want. And it's working. Like I said, what happened to your KRS-1s? What happened to your Bahamadias and the real rappers who were like us, the people who had soul and rhythm? They gone. They all gone. You don't see what's going on here? Even you sisters who got your hair natural, a lot of y'all inculcated. A lot of you, 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 you look black, but mentally you're not. Mentally you're not about the evolution of our people. Now I know people are listening to this. They'll say, "Oh well, what's black? What is black? What is black?" 
you know, is black being in the hood, being ignorant, smoking weed and, 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 talk, and fighting and being ghetto? Is that being black? No, that's being inculcated. That's inculcated. That's the white. That's a white mentality. That doesn't have nothing to do with being black. That ain't got nothing to do with being uh, 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 in tune with who we are as a people. That's not who we are. That's another inculcated uh, mentality that was implanted in our people. You know how you know that? You know how you know that's not who we really are? See, because black people swear up and down because we've been living in the hoods like this, and we've been fighting and smoking weed and selling drugs, listening to hip hop. They think that's something. That's that's a black mentality. It's really not. That's an inculcated mentality. You know how you know that? Because who was in the ghettos before we got here? Who was had, who had all the gangs set up? Right? Who had the gangs set up? Who was going to jail? Who was who was smoking opium in the streets? It was the Italians, the Jews, the Irish. They was doing that. So when we came up here from down south, we started following them. We became inculcated. Who was the ones who was locked up all in the jails up into 1950 and then uh, 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 in, in, a, in uh, large numbers? It was white. Then after we got up here in the 50s and stuff like that, the numbers started being replaced with us. So we started becoming inculcated then. And we started thinking this negative behavior was us. Now, I'm not saying black people are good by no means. You can't be good if you accept this mentality. If you allow yourself to be open and inculcated with this mindset, no. And I'm not saying white people are bad. No, I'm not saying that. You know, it's not about good and bad. Because I said, you know, our people don't emulate. If you want to emulate people, you don't emulate the upper class whites. You don't emulate them. The ones who are on the pedestal, you, you imitate the white trash. Right? You imitate the white trash. But the white people, they separate themselves from their white trash by calling them white trash. By pointing it out, but they the, the higher ups they use the white trash to inculcate the minds of your children, because everything your children are doing in this society is white trash behavior, tattoos, piercings, things like that, looking like her, looking heroin chic. Look at these guys, look at the image they pushing of your ASAP Rocky. Tell me it's not all the same people. ASAP Rocky, uh, a little Wayne, what's the other guy? Uh, uh, um. Uh, 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 Wiz Khalifa What's the other guy The other kid um, I can't think of him right now Tell me it's all not the same image Real skinny Looking like young kids Teenagers Tattoos all over themselves, Tight clothes Looking like her- like they on heroin or something Or on drugs You tell me they're not trying to push the same image What they call heroin chic It looks like the same image Calvin Klein was trying to push In that underwear commercial and the Calvin Klein underwear ads. You tell me that's not a, in, a Caucasian image, an inculcated image. You understand that? And y'all just sit by and y'all watching it happen. Our people are watching it happen. Your generation, your children are going. Those of you who have children like that or hanging around people like that, that generation is going. Pay attention. I'm going to take a call. Seven five seven, you're on the air. No doubt, no doubt. You know what I'm saying? Good call, bro. You know what I'm saying? You hitting all the points. Um, just wanna go on and throw my throw my little piece in there. Um one thing I wanted to throw back on it was it was two things that came to my mind while you was while you was adding on. Um one was the clothing. You know what I'm saying when you was talking about the tight jeans. So I wanted to go back to um, if you remember, we they had that big problem with the baggy jeans, and they just came out with a felony or misdemeanor for mm-hmm. baggy clothes in one of these states. And you know we we can be a little nearsighted on this, but we got to look at the big picture. You know what I mean? Now you look at the big picture. The big picture is the big picture is first who's making the clothes. One, not us. You know what I'm saying? So we, we, we got out of our mind when we stopped even making our own garments and our own clothes, right? <laughs> then two, then when you got into, I we started wearing, I always said that we had some type of epiphany to um, to, to, the, um, to the, the culture to where we didn't like things tied up on us. You know what I'm saying? As far as men, that's why we, you know, we kind of wore, 
the, you know, the baggy clothes to give us some breathing room or so forth, you know, in, in that manner, just, you know, in, in, in a type of way, you know what I'm saying? But it got out of hand when they start wearing it off their butts and, and really not making the clothes according to our anatomy, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and that's being analytical, you know what I'm saying, is that we're not – um, we're not making things for us based off our anatomy. We're still depending on Chinese people, which they're making it in Taiwan and so forth. And um, then what it, what it seemed like to me was that when they start seeing that there might have been a problem with the baggy pants and the baggy jeans, they told the Chinese people, cut it out. We ain't taking no more baggy jeans from China. We want everything to be super dumb tight. <laughs> now, mm-hmm. now the men's pants is like little kids' clothes. You you gonna put on a, a large or extra large? Like, Hold on, this something like for for a three year old or something like that. So, to me, when that happened, and I'm, I mean, me and you both, we actually going through this transition because there is no other option. So when you go in there, and you you picking out a pair of jeans, you putting them on. You like, on. It ain't used to be like this. You know what I'm saying? These joints are tight naturally tight. So it's like somebody actually told them to make this tight, you know what I'm saying, for some type of social conditioning. You know well, what I'm saying? And then oh, go ahead. Well the whole thing is that the, the the whole the point of that is to make pants that are unisex. Where women can wear the pants because a lot of with these pants you see in the guys is wearing a lot of the tight pants and like that, they like women pants, you know. Right. Exactly. The black man, the black man back, the black man in, back in the day, he was wearing in the seventies. You see a lot of the black men; they was wearing that style too. They was you had the black men wearing real skin tight pants. You had the black men wearing that they had polyester fabric. When you look at all the old seventies movies, the black man was wearing skin right. tight pants and whatnot. So you know, like you said, we we um traditionally don't wear stuff like that. But the whole point of Having a man wear skin tight pants like that is so that you can see his frame. Only another man would want to see that. He'll design right. pants. That's that homosexual mentality. You want to see the right. man in front of his penis, his buttocks. <laughs> That's why they do that. You know, and you could tell it's a bunch of homosexuals who design this stuff because they make look look who, like Calvin Klein in them. They make the they 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 just doing they're doing Calvin Klein commercials where they got the guys. Or with their shirts off, doing the underwear ads again, and you know these guys wearing little women drawers. They wearing what we used to call punk panties. They wearing like right. panties, like panties. What they call them briefs, and they wearing <laughs> punk panties. And these guys, you know, they got the guys wearing this now, right? And they tell them, you know, because you got a bunch of old um, perverts. You know I mean, a bunch of old, uh, a bunch of old washed up, a bunch of old homosexuals who design these clothes. They like to see young boys. Uh, skinny anorexic young boys in tight pants. So right. this is what they this is what they making young black boys into. This is what they making these young men half these guys in their twenties and they gotta walk around looking like they anorexic or they or they on, on looking like some looking like the damn Rolling Stones or something like that because that that's that Mick Jagger look. Everybody right, looks right. Rolled out. Everybody look, look. No, it's just all the same stuff because you could tell the people who making these clothes up are the people from who was obviously. Um, old men who was in the 60s and the 70s and whatnot designing clothes, and they was putting that stuff out. And you know, it's the same that heroin chic look like Mick Jagger <laughs> was looking. They, that's how that's how Wiz Khalifa all them guys look. They look the same right. way, right? You know. Now I want to add on the other point. Um, with um, we had um, LL Cool J had the company with Cross Colors, remember? Mm-hmm. And they end up buying Cross Colors out. So one of the aspects was that when we got into the particular point to where there were some brothers that was venturing out, now you know what I'm saying, that that was cognizant of the fact that we need to be doing for ourselves by ourselves. We, I mean, I mean, again, I, I mean, I just, I, I, I feel bad because I'm like, no integrity, and you know what I'm saying, like. You know why did you do that? Like it, it affected us on a. It, it is when cross colors did what they did. It affected us on such a large scale because not only that they sold out. It was like, um, it was like BET selling out. It was the, it was the fact that you told all the rest of the young brothers and the young sisters that was aspiring to do that. That oh yo just go ahead sell out get a couple of dollars we don't need to make our own stuff no more because when cross colors sold out that was the last thing that I seen that was maybe in um 
I forgot the um the rap magazine that we all grew up on with the the one that we last grew up on the hip hop um rap magazine that everybody used to look into for um you know for their culture and their clothes or whatever. But after mm-hmm. they did that, it it, it faded away. It fa- it took. In other words, when people it's like our people don't realize that it has a massive effect on a whole when you sell out or you stop doing for your own people, you know what I'm saying? So it was just, yeah, the cross color thing really hit me hard, not because I like cross color. It was the independence, and it was the part. Well, well, for me, it gave me integrity, you know. Well, well, check the name out. It Was it really our company? Cross Colors. Okay. Listen, listen, listen okay. to the name, Cross Colors. What are what they doing it? right now? They're trying to promote crossing of the color line, right? Right, true. So what was being opened up to us? What was being opened up to us? Because all of those, um, and that that the baggy clothes and things like that. That again, is from that inculcated mindset. Big baggy clothes, where you know you seeing people wear. Because who else does you know who does that as well? The um the goth people, the gothic people who be in the village with the big baggy pants. Right. They do that. Mm-hmm. So that that was they was doing that in the seventies. So the black man that wasn't his. That that ain't that ain't come from us. That came from the white man again. That baggy clothes, the tight clothes, all that come from, you know, what, what happened to just buying regular clothes to fit you? you know, well, or making that? regular clothes to fit you. Or well, making well, them. We, we, <laughs> well, we 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 supposed to be making, because I, I don't have no problem buying clothes, that regular clothes that fit me. So people say, when they say, oh, you know, they don't make those clothes. Yeah, they do. I buy clothes all the time. I know you're not wearing no tight pants, and you're not wearing no big no. baggy pants. You can find clothes that fit you. But what it is is they're promoting that mentality to kids to True. young impressionable kids to follow because they know and they know our children are the most impressionable because nine times out of ten there ain't no father there to tell them yo son you know what you know you looking kind of homo there son get come on let's get it together no you're not piercing you no you ain't putting no tattoos on no you're not piercing no you're not doing that no you're not there's nobody to tell them no. right so right if they right. see their crew doing it they boys doing it that's their family that's who they're gonna follow yeah, That's not, what they're gonna no follow. Team. There's no man there to say, No, you're not gonna do that. You ain't gonna That's put right. no tattoos all over yourself. No, you're not gonna be sitting up here. No, you're not gonna be doing this. No, you're not gonna be at no party somewhere at four or five in the morning. They got some black woman raising them who can't control them. You understand? She done basically gave them, let them do what he wanna do because, you know, there's no father there. You yeah, know, there's no that, father that, there to talk. implant what re- what a being a real man is in their head. Because right. the, 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 this generation, my generation you know, our father started leaving. My father raised me, but that's when our father started leaving. So I still got a semblance of what it was to be a man by my father because my father raised me. But if you ain't got your father raising you, it makes it easy for these people. And they know when they're stepping in because they know the majority of these black men on the left, they fence. They know as soon as they get your kids in high school, they know once they get your kids in, in the school system, they already start inculcating their mind because they know there's no father there to be like, you know, you're not doing this, no, you're not doing it, or there's no father come home when he bringing home a textbook where, you know, mm-hmm. uh, early on when somebody's telling him, uh, Sally got two fathers and, and John got two mothers, and, you know, they expose them <laughs> to that homosexuality and lesbianism yeah. and tell them it's okay. Next thing you know, your son coming home tomorrow, yeah, look at my gay homeboy. He my yeah, the boy, females, he gay. Because the females, they take everything in and be like, oh, everything is good. But the man normally be, like you said earlier, we rebellious by nature. We like, nah, none of that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And we put the brakes on We put the brakes on a lot of things privately. We do. You know what I'm saying? That we might not do in public that the woman normally feels for some way like she has to endorse. Like you said, we all in together. And it's like... I always ask, like, who else is helping y'all black women? You know what I'm saying? Is Chinese women helping you? Is white women helping you and feeding you? Why do you keep thinking that we all in this together? We're not in this together. We're not in this together. Keep Stop thinking that it's a group effort going on out here because the group effort is to keep you, like you said, unfocused on your children so that they can they can drag them in. But I want to make two more points. I'm going to fall back because I know, you, you know what I'm saying, you, you got to do your thing at 10. Um, the, the homeschooling thing um, is, is one thing I wanted, wanted to hear you add on on, and the skateboarding. I can't take I can't take no more of these, these brothers on skateboards. I swear I'm about to get out of the car on them. I can't take little, little, little brothers 
around here, you know what I'm saying, with tight jeans and skateboards, I'm about to lose it. I mean, that's like the, when you say about the cork, when you say about the, um, I forgot the, the, whatever the word that you use for it. When I inculcated. see little young, inculcated, when I see little young brothers not, not even doing any athletic, throwing no football, no sprinting, nothing, you know what I'm saying, no push-ups, definitely. They ain't even doing no push-ups. But I see these, I, when I'm riding, and I see these, I'm riding past cats on skateboard, I really, something in me makes me want to jump out and be like, yo, throw that skateboard away. You is not no cracker. You is not no little white boy. For some reason, it just makes me irate because I know that, some, like you said, something has something has happened to us. You know what I'm saying? But those two things I want you to add on. And, you know, like I said, I fall back. Well, know? okay. Um, right. here, here's the thing with the um, skateboard. I, we we skateboarded when we was younger. You know I mean, I I did that. We did that when we were younger. But you know, something called uh, adulthood stopped us from doing that as we got older. Like you know, that was good when we, fun and games when we was kids. But certain people want to stay kids forever. They want to ride around on scooters and skateboards because the whole thing is to, you know, dumb you down, make you keep you in a childlike mentality or childlike mind state where you riding a skateboard around. You know, like a kid, right? Yeah. Now, as far as what you know, I I well homeschooling. You know, the problem with that is always going to be, you know, the black woman. And I'm not putting the whole thing on the black woman, the black man too, but especially the black woman, because I know it's the black woman shies away from anything when you're talking about race. When you start talking about race and, you know, and yeah. the evolution of your people, black women shy away from that because black women are the biggest ones who want this we are the world mentality going. <laughs> they, they got this right. we are the world mentality, you know, because they, black women, like I said, they were the first ones to be inculcated. They were the first ones to be, you know, they want peace. They want things like this, they, and they, they want to belong to something. You know, they want to belong to this pop culture, this American pop culture. They don't want to be a part of anything that we as a unit, as a family, should be building. Same way the Jews build their own unit within America, the Italians build their own family unit in here, their own culture. The, the black woman, she don't really want that because, like I said, they want to work on her yeah. first. They they went to work on her with this idea that you know uh, um, to be accepted you know you have to you know uh, you know you have to be all inclusive and not exclusive in what you do and there's nothing wrong with being exclu- exclusive in what you do like I said I don't have anything against white people who are exclusive in their own communities and in their own uh, uh, um, in their own culture I don't have anything against that I don't have anything against the Jews who do that. And in, in, in New York or wherever, I don't have anything against the Asians that do that. I don't have anything against the East Indians that do that. Black people are the only ones that that have a problem when it comes to doing that. Then, like I said, it's something wrong when black people do that. When black somebody, even black people will find a problem with that. They can go, they'll go in, a, they'll go in an Italian neighborhood. Oh no, that's the Italian neighborhood over there. Or oh, that's the Jewish community over there. Or that's the, and they won't say nothing about that. They don't, no, they won't go and say nothing to the Jews or the Italians. But like, why can't we live over here? And why, why do y'all want to? section yourself up and have your own community. They won't say that, but the minute a black person do it, oh, that's racist. Why are you, we all the same. They always want to give a black person a problem. Well, because it's to... like people, it's like they want to, this, it's like a two-way thing. Like which, what, we, what we're building on is the um, separation, you know what I'm saying, away for the black race. Then you got this other momentum that's like a super integration. Like, like it's a, you know, what was it? Who was it? Booker T. Washington and um, what was the other brother? That was beefing back in the days. Booker T. Washington oh, and, uh, and uh, Marcus Garvey. Is, yeah, one of them that was beefing, and, and it's the same thing. Like you got this whole, you got this whole joint to where it's people that say, well, the successful ones have integrated, and then it's, it's, it's those of us saying, yo, you losing everything. You losing your your man, your wife, your 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 uh, family. You know, your children, we're integrating, and we need to pull back because, like you said, no identity, which which integrating. And so you got these two, you got these two, um, these two arms on the body. We're one body, and you got these two arms saying, nah, man, nah, if we go up in here, you know what I'm saying, then my kid, they can get this college, you know what I'm saying? Like you said, all the BS, that they don't care, like, what, you know, like you said, what we're saying is true. A lot of them really like, yo, I know it's true. They know what you're saying is a hundred. 
They know it's a hundred, but they like, nah, man. They need to get this money and take care of themselves and their children. And then there's other ones that then went through it, like I don't went through it, and other people like my mom. They don't went through it and say, you know what? That's BS. You know what I'm saying? By the time you get up inside there, it's BS. They all phony. They all the, the, the niggas is sucking. They you know what I'm saying? They tap dancing. And and if you got any integrity growing up, you ain't gonna do that. So you got another group of people that saying, nah. You know what? It was it was all a flim flam from the beginning. Um, um, Martin Luther King. And it was a whole flim flam job. You know what I'm saying? To get everybody to um, kumbaya and sing along so that we felt like in, in church and all of that, that was all a setup. You know what I'm saying? Because in Eastern religion, they don't pray. You know what I'm saying? They meditate. They don't get down and beg. They meditate. And you know what I'm saying? So the whole the whole philosophy that he given to us was all, you know what I'm saying? We we seeing it now, and it's like, it's like two arms that's pulling. You know what I'm saying? Like, so how you know, like, it's like, well, okay, you're going to go inside and integrate and get some money or you risk not going inside and maintaining just with your integrity and not having everything that the privileged society, because I feel like Beyonce doing that, like she really don't don't look like the type that belongs there or want to do it. She like she come from a real family, but she like, okay, if I don't do the Jay-Z thing and, you know, and the sellout thing, then I ain't going to have it for my kids. I get that type of feeling. You know what I'm saying? Just looking at her demeanor and her disposition, you know, and that there's a lot of brothers and sisters that fall in line behind that, you know. I mean, but you know, like I said, that's that's how I feel. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, here, here, here's here's the thing that other people practice that black people don't practice something I call integrated separation. Black people yeah. don't practice integrated separation. In other words, be in the world but not of it. Right. You understand? Well, I see everybody yeah. else practices integrated separation. Black people don't. They don't know how yeah. to be in the world, but not of it. See, that's, that's what we in the state of Intel. We we in the world. And see, and we thir- we in the world. We we more in the world than anybody, but we not of it. You could be in the world, but not of it. We here in the society, yeah. We paying taxes. We doing what we do. We law abiding and whatnot. We not breaking any laws, but. We're not of this world mentally. The black man and black woman, they not only want to be in the world, not they're not only in the world, but they are they not in this world, but they of it mentally. That's the damn problem. The Jews, they in here, but they ain't of this mentally. They not they they not with this mentally. Yeah. You ain't gonna see that's they right. kids, you they not in this mentally. We not supposed to be in this mentally. That's why you can right. breed a bunch of inculcated children. That's why you can allow your kids to do the things they do and accept the philosophies and the mentality of this pe- of these people. Because, like I said, black people are in it physically and mentally. We mentally, just in it. Yeah. Like I said, we gotta be in it. We 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 ain't got no other choice but to be in it physically, no matter where we go. We right. in the world, but we don't have to be in it mentally. And once you stop being in it mentally, you understand. Once you stop being in it mentally, then you're gonna start to see. The thing, the physical realm around you start to change. But let me go, brother. I'm gonna pay a little bit. Okay, no doubt, no doubt. All right, all right. All right. Peace. All right. So, we'll. I want y'all to ponder that for a minute while we while we take this break. Ponder the whole idea of being in it physically, but not in it mentally. You understand? Integrated separation. You can still, you know, we here. You know, we. we of course, you're gonna be for where you at. You live here. I'm not saying be against the society or be against anything. Don't be against the society. Like I said, you don't have to be for or against it. You could be – you're here, and you're doing what you're doing existing here because that's the uniform that we, we're standing here under this thing called – under this society. I'm not against the society, but the mentality is something totally different. It's, your mentality should be beyond this. We're the only ones whose mentality is deep in the, in the mud of this thing. We'll talk about that when we come back. You know, um, the problem with a lot of our people, like I said, when we speak about race, they first thing, like I said, the black man, the black woman, especially the black woman, first her alarm goes off. Right? Her alarm goes off. Are y'all teaching about hate? I don't deal with the racial thing. Right? I don't deal with the racial thing. I don't deal with the racial thing. You got no other choice but to deal with it. Because whether we mention the racial thing or not, if we just say, you know, black people coming together doing for themselves, you look at it as race, right? You don't look at it when, you know, people are excluding you every day. You don't say anything about that. 
Many black people talking about coming together and doing for something. You ain't even mentioned the white man. You ain't mention nobody. Many of people talking about uh, uh, thinking on a higher level, advancing our way of thinking. It's always those inculcated people that will find a problem with that because they're programmed to find a problem with that. They're programmed to come to anything like this setting here and disrupt it or have a problem with it or get turned off by it. Question. How do you have a problem with black people, so-called black people, people look like you trying to come together collectively and think on a high level? How do you have a problem with that? Why? Because we mentioned the white man. Because we mentioned that we said white and black. We didn't even say anything bad about white people, but you just going to find a problem with it. Right? You'll find a problem with it because we mentioned race, because you have been inculcated. We can't mention race. That's the 800-pound elephant in the room. That's always going to be the 800-pound elephant in the room. Race is always going to be there. Right? Whether we mention it or not. Right? So what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to sit here, keep being inculcated mentally, keep walking around, acting like, you know, acting out in the hood. Because like I said, all this acting out, this behavior that we're seeing from, you know, this over-emotional behavior that's coming from the black man, this ignorant mentality that's coming from the young black girls. You understand? These people who have no control over their emotions, where they become emotional, they're no longer sentimental people or people who think about or put their thoughts into energy or into into their uh, uh, responses anymore, not thinking people. These are the inculcated ones, right? These are the people who don't have check of their emotions. You're seeing all these things come out now. You're seeing all these things come out about our people now. You know, we used to be the people who were always thinking, but we don't think anymore. We just go by what's thrown in front of our face because we've been inculcated mentally. We've been inculcated physically. Right? That's that's the reality. That's not something I made up. Right? You know, the black woman, she don't want her, uh, you know, she don't want to be made to feel uncomfortable. You know, she's the first one when somebody starts talking about race, she gets scared. Right? She'll rather let her children be sacrificed, you know, with into this mentality that they're having, that they're adopting, this losing mentality. You r- rather have you allow your children to be sacrificed, destroyed, their futures destroyed, just so you can have the uh, uh, you have the idea, or you can have the uh, illusion of fitting into this world, of fitting into society and being one. It's so messed up. That black people will join religious groups like the Mormons. They join the Mormons. They join the Jehovah Witness, right? And they forget about the men that started these things. They forget all. They don't even check the history of the men that started these things. You have old black women out there who are Jehovah Witnesses, and this man Joseph Smith, who started it, was a racist. The man who started the uh, uh, Brigham Young, who started the Mormons, racist. Said black people was cursed. White Jesus on there, they said, no, you know, and black people join these things, right? They forget about that. They forget about the people that brought these things out, the, the, the history on these people and the history on these teachings. They don't. They will never refer to those as cults. But if somebody came along and reminded them of this, oh, you being racist, it's not about race, that was at the time, and this, that, and the third, you know, those are people who are thoroughly inculcated. That's the same answer you'll get from these young kids when you talk about the past. Or not even you don't have to talk about the past. You can talk about what's going on in the present, and they'll ignore you and be like, "Oh, well, we all the same. That's just a few people tripping. No, I don't won't worry about them. I'm just doing me." That's your inculcated people. Those are the people you can't do anything with. You understand? Those people are gone. You look in the eyes of the young black men today. The ones who are like this, who tattooed up, who pierced up and all this other stuff. They look like they walking around like zombies. They look like walking zombies. They don't even look like they're alive. They look like they had their souls snatched out their damn bodies. And they just walking around like a bunch of zombies, a bunch of black zombies. Look in their eyes. Half the time they don't even want you looking at them. Because they lost. They don't want you to see their confused, lost look. Right? They really hyper, right? They all focus and talk about they they got all this energy and things like and they focus to, to do nothing. 
They focus to go hang out, play ball, smoke weed, to do nothing. This is what they this is what they life is. Get up, smoke weed, play ball, uh, cut class, do all this nonsense. No focus on the future. Right? Then they out in the world. They trying to hustle. They trying to be gangsters. They trying to be thugs. They trying to be rappers. They trying to be athletes. They trying to do anything to get over. Right? You go back to a time where our people value technical education. Right? Technical education. You know, after our people got out of slavery, a lot of them couldn't wait to receive technical education. See, because the philosophical thing wasn't up and going so much yet. They didn't have that down pat. You could tell the universities in this country don't didn't have the inculcated philosophy down yet. They had it down somewhat. So you was producing your inculcated Negroes back then. You know, guys with perm in their head too soon. They get some conk in their head. The guys who was going around act talking like a. a What's the guy's name? Uh, uh, um, the guy who was always going against Marcus Garvey, uh, uh, W.E.B. Du Bois, that Uncle Tom, right? And then what happened with E.B. Du Bois? Once he went against Garvey and disrespected Garvey for talking about going back to Africa, then he went to the white man. The white man turned on him. And what did he end up doing? He went and go, end up go living in Africa and died in Africa. Talk about ironic. He got on Garvey all them years about talking about going back to Africa and calling him Garvey an ape and calling him ignorant and all this other stuff, going all kind of disparaging names with his mulatto self. Then he ends up going to Africa and living there, never coming back to America and dying there. He lives there as an old man and dies. Hmm. Funny. Funny. Funny and sad. All at the same time. These people forget. And take another call. Six one zero. Six one zero, you're on the air. Peace, peace. I just want to say, um, I ran into your show being on Facebook and I was going to say peace to Blog Talk Radio. I didn't get your name and everything like that. I just want to say peace from the door because we're brothers. All right, peace, brother. And I want to say, um, I'm just going to elaborate on what you said about the black youth, how they look like zombies and this tattoo thing, and um, how you said about um, how. I, I me personally, excuse me, me personally, I think it's influenced by it is influenced by um, not us black people, quote unquote our name, but I, I'm for it's not it's not for some it's influenced from the white man actually white people white kids because you know what I'm saying I'm a skater you know strength skateboards and I see I see all these kids you know what I'm saying they they, they kind of lost because I was in the social security office and um, there were some kids there exactly how you said they look and I said peace to them. And they, they they looked at me like I wanted beef, and I was just saying peace, and I had my little C with me. I was like, peace, man, you know what I'm saying? Are you a skateboarder? You look like a skater. You, you, you know what I'm saying? Why don't you holler at me? They just looked at me like I was crazy. I didn't even know how to react. I didn't know how to get mad at them or, or what. It just made me mad and sad. And I found your show. I was like, damn, this brother's talking about exactly what I'm going through. And I'm 39 years old, you know what I'm saying? So I see all this. Yeah, well, it's a, it's a whole, there's no, uh, there's no brotherhood amongst Black men anymore, so, you yeah, know. It's so scary, that's you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, they, they, it's scary because you know what I'm saying. I'm a skater, a black skater, you know what I'm saying. So I got a little, little, a little, how can you say, a little, a little reach more than the average, you know what I'm saying, brother going down the street, you know what I'm saying? Because I could, I could reach them a little bit with my skateboarding thing. But then again, you know what I mean? It's kind of hard to talk to them, so I let my skateboarding. And, and and what I do on a skateboard, reach to them, you know what I'm saying, to try to pull them out of that that, that zombie walking around, as you said, because it is true. Like the tattoo thing, I, I see it, you know what I mean? And they got that Molly thing going on. It's real sad, so, you know what I'm saying? I try to do the strength skateboard, you know what I'm saying, in my little city of Pennsylvania called Ready PA. So I made a skateboard company called Skate Tough for Ready and Race Negativity to Go to Hell so I could teach kids, you know what I'm saying, to pull them out of this, this dead mind state, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's hard, but I only was on the show on the radio for like five minutes, and it touched me because what you said about the babies. Mm -hmm. It's hard, man. It's hard to reach them, so, you know what I'm saying? I tried to do the skateboards, and I wish I could talk to you longer, you know what I mean? So I'm trying to hurry up. I'm kind of nervous, you know, I'm trying to hurry up, but I was getting sad and talking to you at the same time, you know what I mean? It's okay. It's deep for us. It's, it's deep it's for okay. us. So. Well, let me it's ask sad. you something. Mm -hmm. well, well, let me ask you something. Mm -hmm. how, old, how old you said you are? I'm 39 years old. 39? 
Yeah, and, uh, I'll be 40 on May 25th. And you, do you got the tattoos and stuff like that? I mean, I got two tattoos. Okay. Do you do and the they're Molly? Not, and, they're co- and they're covered, even if they weren't covered. But now it's like, it's, it's, how you say that word? Um, overkill. It's overkill now. Mm-hmm. Do you, overkill what, what is what is the Molly's? What is Molly's? It's, it's well, it's, it's, it's killing the youth in my city right now. I don't. I didn't really do the math on it, but it looks. It's like a powdery drug. It looks like to me. It looks like crack. I saw it, mm. but, it but I saw a couple of pictures. It does look like crack, but you can do everything with it. Smoke it, sniff it, swallow shoot it, it, everything. You know what I'm saying? Can you shoot it. About it. Rap song. So you can do everything with it. Burn it. Everything. Everything that a drug that the dope and the crack could do. This could do it quicker. This is what I saw in my dream. I saw a long time ago that they quicker, they, you know what I'm saying? They that, manufactured even better. Yeah, it's, it's like this is what. I, it's like nineteen eighty Ronald Reagan again. Yeah, this is this is the new heroin for y'all. See, they had heroin for the black men in the sixties, and now they got this Molly stuff, and probably got heroin and stuff in it, and all kind of other chemicals. Yeah, and it's really got y'all minds really blown and whatnot. Yeah, it's ready to so, it. It's real slick you know, I mean, with it. You know what I'm saying? Have you ever tried it? Excuse me? Have you ever tried it? Nah, brother, I don't do no drugs, brother. Come on now. No, I'm just asking. I got, asking. I, got I, I got babies to take care of. Superb, Victory, Joshua, okay. Jacob Fahim alive. You know what I'm saying? I take care of my babies, man. Come on. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I'm asking. I hold, I'm, nah, I'm nah, I hold down, I hold down strength skateboards. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Well, do you, you ever thought? You, do you do you make skateboards? Nah. Um, what I do is, you know what I'm saying? Um, when I was on it. I was, first of all, I want to say peace to Trufa Allah from Arizona, Mr. Arizona. He's the one who put me in the direction of what am I going to do when I come back to the East Coast, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know what I'm saying, he's a, he's a father, son, brother, you know, mission of God's on earth, and he put me in the direction of, you know what I'm saying, to do stuff for the babies and myself. Well, Strength Skateboards, you know what I'm saying, it's a skateboard company. What I do is, you know what I'm saying, only thing I ask the kids, you know what I'm saying, is come check me out. I talk to them. I have, sometimes I give them a free skateboard, you know what I'm saying, just so they can get them out what they're doing. You know, it's a skateboard company. I'm on the website, www.strandscapers.com. I'm on Facebook, Strand Skateboards. You can holler at me. You've seen me on there. What I do is take trips. I grab kids off the street, try to make them skate, or they just come find me, you know what I'm saying? So I've been well, skating why, for a well, long time. Well, why don't you make it, why don't you start a skateboard company? This is my skateboard company. It is oh, is it? Company. Oh, you make, that's why yeah. I asked you. You make skateboards, no, I don't make, right? I don't make the wood. I don't make the wood. You know what I'm saying? I, I buy the wood and get my logos. I get my logos and put it on wood. They put it on wood for me. That's where I'm at right now. Eventually, I would they make my own wood. That's my little baby right now. That's the three right now. You should be. You should be. If you're gonna be doing that, because I'm gonna be honest with you, you're you're, you're 40 years old. It, actually, when the black man hits 30, 13 years old, he's supposed to go into another phase in his life. You know that whole thing of the bar mitzvah and the bar mitzvah with the girls when we went from becoming children to men. That was supposed. That actually came from us. Right. Well, we were supposed I to. I'm gonna take. Did you see that from the girl? I'm sorry. All right. Do you know the the number in the Jewish or the so-called Jewish or the Israelite law when a, a boy or a girl hits the age of 13, right? Mm-hmm. They go through what's called a bar mitzvah or a bat mitzvah. Oh right? yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Now that is where you go from being children to young men and young women. That's considered the time because 13 represents a new beginning. The number 13 represents a new day or a new beginning. That came from us. All right. Okay. We don't do that anymore. Then when you hit 40 years old, you're supposed to be going through another time in your life. You are officially a man. All right? Okay. Now, as a man, officially, if this has been your life. Uh, this you know, is my lifestyle, yeah. yeah this, is your, if this is your life. If this is your life, as a man who is dedicated to that, you need to be making a company or something uh, something out of that. I guess, you, like you said, you're making a company out of that and make that your business other than just, you know, riding around. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Mo- you know, because yeah, you know, of what I'm doing. Yeah, that's that's what I'm doing, brother. Because uh, yeah, I hope I hope so. Because at, I'm a, like I said, no disrespect to you, but at 40 years old, if you're not doing that, it, it looks ridiculous to be yeah, doing I mean, that. If you're not, if you're not doing, do, you know, do do like I said. You know what I'm saying? Call me, check me out, and you and you'll see. You go to my website, and you see what I got going on. You know what I'm saying? Okay, I'll ridiculous. do that. It's not ridiculous because I work with youth too. I, that's what I'm saying. I work with youth, and I, that's why I call in. He said about the youth looking like that. It's not ridiculous to what I do. I'm going to call in and make a fool of myself. 
Yeah, no, no, I'm talking thick. about I'm talking about a grown man, a grown yeah. man skateboarding to make it make sense. Like it doesn't look it doesn't look bad for Stan Lee. I'm just using him as an example to draw a comic yeah. because he made a business out of that. It should mm-hmm. it, it's not gonna look bad for you if you actually making a business out of this and making actually manufacturing skateboards and whatnot and having something for the youth. Whereas not only are you just showing them you yourself as a skater, but you're showing yourself as a businessman also where they yeah. should be going well, and looking yeah. in the line of business. Well, death, well, death, yeah, yeah. That's okay. why, you know what I'm saying? That's why I called in and let you know, put the plug in right there and you see what I'm doing. Exactly. All right, yeah. all right. Okay. Uh, if you in the chat okay. room, I don't know if you're in the chat room. Yeah, I didn't get this chat room yet, you know what I'm saying? I just called it. I just told the number. I heard what you said. I called in real quick. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm going to the chat room, but thanks for your time. Yeah, go in the chat room, put your information in there. One of the sisters in there, they'll get it to me, all right? Peace. Peace. All right. Yeah, this is a uh, situation. We at where you know men's side is being uh, put on our people. You understand that? Men's side, I agree with that. You know, even the people that come in here and have something negative to say, a lot of you have been inculcated. You understand that you don't even know it. The saddest thing is to see people who don't even know it. They don't even know that they've been uh, uh, inculcated. This right here is the only real evolutionary talk you're going to hear amongst our people. You're not going to hear any other evolutionary talk. Our people talking about Africa and Egypt and all this other stuff and whatever, and, and Islam and Christianity and Moorish science, that's not evolutionary talk. This, would, this is why the door is open for children to become inculcated. Like I told you yesterday, our children are looking for evolutionary talk. Africa ain't cutting it. Uh, Islam ain't cutting it. Egyptology ain't cutting it. So they make themselves open to these uh, philosophies, these ways of thinking, and they don't grow up. They don't grow up. They don't grow up mentally, right? They don't even grow up physically. Their mentality is still childlike. They don't, you know, like I said, they can't, these are not the people that can take the world and move forward in the world. They can't because their minds are gone. They've been inculcated. Like I said, you know, a lot of people think, you know, all you got to do is yell black power this and black this and black that, and that means you haven't been inculcated. I said those are the biggest people who have been inculcated. It's always done subtly. It's done subtly. Sir, you know, one point next thing, somebody appears with tight pants on, tattoos all over themselves, so, and you see it enough, you don't think there's anything wrong with it. Understand? You see young girls, 10, um, 12, 13 years old, walking down the street kissing on each other, or they wearing tight pants with they with, with they ass hanging out, with um, looking like boys. You know, they got tattoos all over themselves, looking like boys. They they gay already, at 11, 12 years old, right? They, they, like I said, they, they walking around, they pants hanging down. So, like I said, they've already been inculcated. <clears throat> you leave the door open for this. You leave the door open for this. You leave the door open for degenerate behavior. Nobody notice our people don't even understand. Nobody st- notice this, gen- this. This this society don't stand up for. Nobody else, nobody labels anything degenerate behavior anymore. You ever notice that? Remember it was a time where they would consider homosexuality, lesbianism, pedophilia, and these things, and, and people tattooing themselves all up. Remember when in the time in the 60s and whatnot, even when the white man would call that degenerate behavior? Notice he doesn't call it degenerate behavior anymore. He calls it life choices and styles and ways of life now. He don't, there's, no, there's no more line between what's degenerate and what's progressive behavior. It's no more degenerate. It's no more, it's no more judgment of degenerate behavior. Notice that. Only no, excuse me, they do it amongst themselves quietly, but not amongst us. Because we telling our people, Don't judge. Don't judge me. Don't judge me because of that. Don't judge me because of that. These are people who are inculcated mentally. There's no way you can't judge. There's no way. When people tell you don't judge and they saying, Don't judge my inculcated behavior, don't judge my sick degenerate mentality. Don't judge the fact that I'm walking around out here bugged out my mind on drugs. Molly's, the new heroine of the next generation. Molly's. Whatever the hell that is, selling Molotov cocktails. 
That's the new heroin. And it don't and the and, and the beat marches on and the dumbing down don't stop. You can smoke it, like the brother said. You can smoke it. You can uh, inhale it. Probably can shoot it. Right? And they gonna promote that. Trust me. Your inculcated uh, these inculcated people, the ones who uh, had that mentality, they're gonna promote that. That's the new drug of choice for the new drug culture. Y'all are the new degenerates, and we think it's a cool thing. We think it's a cool thing. Y'all are the next degenerates, right? The next degenerates to come up. It's cool, right? Hmm. Twilight world people living in. We'll be right back. You know, don't um, don't get upset. Uh, these things are taking place. This is all prophecy. This is all meant to happen. All right? This is all prophecy. We are coming to the end of a time. Right? And at the end of a time, there's the beginning of a time. One thing ending signals the beginning of something else. When you see one thing ending is signaling something else. The opening of a new door. All the mentally weak Negroes are going to go and follow the beast. All your Wiz, Khalifas, and your little Waynes, they're going to go follow the beast. They're going to follow his ways and all the little skateboarders, the little pill poppers, the little tattooed up, pierced up, little Nicki Minaj type women. They're going to go follow the beast. They, they're going to go. They, they meant, they're not, they not people of God. They're not, they not the God, they're not of the God race. All right? They're not of the God race. They're not the gods, they're not the new gods coming to, onto the planet. So they're gonna go with their master, right? They're gonna the weak, the weak will go with the beast. The mentally weak will go with the beast. They already have their, they already have his mark in their forehead. This was all destined to be. So I don't like I said, I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at nothing. I'm not mad at nothing that goes on in this society. Though it may seem like I'm mad, or it's more passion than anything. I'm not mad. I'm actually happy. I'm actually happy to see the homosexuality and the lesbianism going on. And that sounds funny. I'm happy to see it. I'm happy to see the gays and the lesbians and all of them coming out the closet. I'm happy. I support that. You know why? Because it's going to force people to take sides. If you're not with that, it's going to force you to move away from that. It's going to force you to separate yourself. If this don't make you separate yourself, if your ASAP Rockies and these niggas walking around with tattoos all over themselves, taking mollies, wanting to date your daughter, wanting to uh, uh, lay up with your daughter uh, or your son or whatever they, you know, they they getting into now, you know, if that don't make you want to separate from these people, if that don't make you want to stop being amongst these people, then nothing will. Then you mentally weak. You with them. If that don't make you come together collectively with the intelligent ones, the God race that's being raised up. The people who have God's name tattooed in their forehead, Amen, the true and living God, not that fake God from religion, not those fake gods from Christianity, Islam, Judaism, and all that other nonsense. I'm talking about the real, true, and living God, Amen. Right? If that doesn't make you stand up in the name of Amen, then you go with the beast. You deserve to be destroyed. You deserve to fall with him. He deserves to take you down mentally, like he's going to do with the majority of our people. Two-thirds of our people are going to go. The hell with two thirds of all people. The hell with them. God is not dealing with two thirds of all people. He's not dealing with the Christians and the Muslims and the Israelites. He ain't dealing with y'all. Because y'all are inculcated. Y'all got the mind of the beast. That's why y'all arguing with them. You fighting with them. You talking about black power, white power, us against them. No, it ain't no us against them. It's us moving forward, the intelligent ones of all people. We don't want no us against them dynamic. It's about us moving forward. It's about us moving in our own lane. That's what that's about. That's what that's about. It's about the mentally strong moving on, not getting caught up in this. I don't care what goes on here. I'm not interested. I don't care. I told you I done tuned out of this a long time ago. I I look at people like Jay-Z and Beyonce and all these people that people look up to, and I really don't get it. And it's not because I, I dislike I don't I don't dislike or like these people. It's not about that. It's not about disliking or like. I just don't get their vibe. I don't get where they're coming from. So obviously I'm not in this world mentally with these people. I'm mentally not here. So I'm here for the people who are mentally on the next level coming up. I'm with those people. 
who have made it beyond this nonsense. I'm there for these people. I'm not here to talk to those people who are inculcated into this world, who care about the things that's going on here amongst these people. I'm not here for them. So if it offends them, don't be offended. I support you because you being here signals the end. Because once you get a society that no longer decide, um, judges de de degenerate behavior, that now degenerate behavior is normal, and it's just a lifestyle, a choice, and once you see that in society, that represents the fall of another world and a new world coming in. That's what that represents. God's kingdom on earth. God's government on earth. Order. A new order. A real new world order. That's what that represents coming in. See that? When you see our people doing this, when you see the black man out of order like this, the black woman out of order, when they've been thoroughly inculcated with this mentality, this sub-mental degenerate mentality that they following, that's a sign of the end. That's a sign of the end and a new beginning. It's coming. All our people got to do is come together and hold on. You understand? So we call for our people to come out, come out from amongst this, come amongst the intelligent ones of our people. You understand? This new race of people come from from out from amongst the black race because the black race, the majority of our people are mentally dead. They finished. That's why they can accept these things. That's why they part. They in this world. They they in this world physically and mentally of this world. That's what it means to say when you in it and of it. You have the mark of the beast in your forehead. You have his philosophies, his ideas. You with it. You okay with everything. You think everything is okay with you here. You're not interested in coming together collectively with your people who are not with it. You with it. You okay with what's going on here. You fine with it. You fit right in. Most of you black women, you go out with these simple-minded Negroes. The guys are sitting around, like I said, they inculcated too. You black men who are sitting around watching a damn football game all day, smoking weed or going to the strip club, you've been inculcated because that's the mentality of a white man. Understand? You're not thinking about building nothing for your family or for your children or putting your or moving your people forward. Then you got the mentality. You've been inculcated. You just like any other. You just a shaded version of a white man, a middle class white man. You understand that? You ain't no different. And you'll tell you. And you already say you said, ah, well, we all the same. Yeah, because you believe that. Because you are the same. But we ain't the same kind of people. We not the same kind of people. You understand that? We're a totally different breed. We're a totally different breed. No, we're not racist. Not racism. We don't hate nobody. I don't hate white people. I don't hate nobody. I don't hate white people. I don't hate the human race. I don't hate nobody. You understand? I don't hate or love anybody. I'm just watching and observing and paying attention and watching the time. And sending a signal out to our people who are evolving mentally. The fall, like I said, or the people who will fall at the hands of their own devices or ignorant devices, that's on them. The majority of our people who are weak-minded who will follow them, you will go. Go follow them. I'm not telling you to stop. I'm not standing up again. I'm not... Uh, saying ASAP Rocky and them is bad for some of y'all. Y'all love ASAP Rocky. Some of y'all love Snoop. Some of y'all love all these rappers and things like that and the, and the R&B people and the Negroes and the entertainment and so-called celebrity. You love them. Go be with them. I'm not hating on them. I don't hate on them. I don't hate on them. I don't love them. This is this is for the people. This is for the people who can hear this message who are not with that. That's for the people that, that have been looking for this relief who are not with it. That one-third that 13th tribe, that 13th covenant, that elect people, that God race, the almond beings. This is for this, who this message is for. It ain't for the black race. You understand? It ain't for the black race. It ain't for the black race and it ain't against the black race. It ain't for or against you. It's neither. It's neutral. The message is neutral when it comes to the black race. It has no connection to you. The people, those of our people who want to be the carbon copy versions of the white man, those who have been thoroughly inculcated, your, a.k.a. your black Caucasians. This is not for you. This message is exclusionary for you. It's only for the bright ones of our people who are amongst them, the ones of our people who are evolving and waking up, who are ready to move forward. You understand? I said the same thing. Who the hell is ASAP Rocky? I didn't even know who he was. Obviously, he's somebody that they putting up on a pedestal for your children to follow. 
You understand? He's the new he's the new person they put in a new it guy. I mean, he's the new little Wayne for New York. He's the little, new little Wayne for New York. He's the new it guy. The new one, the new um, guy that's gonna have your kids um, um, popping mollies and smoking, um, drinking cough syrup and smoking weed. That's gonna be the new role model for your kids. But that's meant for them to go. Take them, take them, take the majority of those kids. They meant to go anyway. Take them. Take the ones, take the ones that want to follow ASAP Rocky and all of them, because now the ones of our kids who have their intelligence intact, the ones who have the God's name in their forehead, the God race, the true and living walking gods and goddesses on earth, they're going to wake up and want to separate. You understand? They're going to want to come from amongst these people and separate. They're supposed to get worse, because by them getting worse, it's only going to make you wake up and open your eyes to what's going on here. It's going to make you want to come together with your people and get better. Collectively, it's going to make you want to build. It should make you want to come together with your people collectively and build something. You ain't got no excuse. Our people ain't got no excuse. You want the answer to this? That is to come together with your people and what we doing in the state of mental. Because we the only ones that's focused on the future. All these other Negroes, they dead man. They focused on the past. They want things to go back to the past four thousand years ago, five thousand years ago, because they don't want to look into the future. They've been inculcated too, in a way. They've been inculcated too. Because they focus on history. They focused on ancient history. They're not focused on future. They're not focused on what we call futury. Coming futury, a present day futury. They're not focused on the future. They're not futuristic people. See, if you are truly a god, as you call yourself, you're supposed to be futuristic in your thinking. If you are truly a goddess, you're supposed to be futuristic in your thinking always. Always futuristic. That means you can't follow the ways of the past. You can't follow Allah. You can't call yourself Allah. You can't follow uh, Jesus or Jehovah or Yahweh or any of those gods from the religion or any of those old teachings from the last millennium. You can't. You have to be coming into a new mentality as of 2000, meaning you have to separate and cut away all the old stuff from the last millennium. Because I said every 10 decades, every 100 years. God sends intelligence to the planet, new intelligence to the planet to move our people forward. If you ain't with that intelligence, if you are not being reborn by the light of that intelligence coming from the true and living God, what we say in his name now and live and direct, roaring and cut, amen. If you're not receiving the intelligence of God, amen, in this day and time to move our people forward, if you're not helping to push this evolution, if you're not coming to be a part of this evolution, then go be with him. You got the mark of the beast. You inculcated. Goodbye. Go with the rest of the black race. You won't be missed. Understand? You won't be missed. You're not counted amongst God's people anyway. That book of Revelation is real. I don't give a damn what nobody say. It's real because everything in there is happening. Everything in there is happening. Go back to those broadcasts when I bo- broke down the book of Revelation. It's real. It's real. So. Let me go ahead and answer these questions before we get out of here. All right. It's been a mellow night. And uh, like I said, we're not for or against these people. They belong to the beast anyway. They were born to follow the beast anyway. So I don't feel bad, it's bad for these Negroes. They were born with the mark of the beast on them. So they can go, he can go ahead and have them. What does uh, inculcated mean? Well, that's a word that we that you know we came with in the state of Mintel. Like I said, that word came through me, right? And it's basically a people who have been made Caucasian mentally. They've been made degenerate people mentally. And I'm not saying all Caucasians are degenerates. I'm not saying that. I'm not racist. But you got white trash, just like you got black trash. You got good white people. Yeah, you got some good white people. You got good black people. You got necessary white people and you got necessary black people and you got a lot of unnecessary white people and a lot of unnecessary black people that's where your white trash comes in from and that's what has been that's what was used to inculcate the mentality of the black man and the black woman the two-thirds of our people anyway that white trash mentality that y'all paint what paint blackface on you are the people who have been inculcated 
And I'm also talking about you people who sit up here swallowing down information and acting and talking like this uh, so-called progressive white populace. And they've also inculcated the Asians. They've inculcated the, uh, uh, the East Indians. They've all been inculcated too. They no longer have what made them, uh, 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 differentiated them from everyone else. So they've been inculcated as well. Right. How does uh, one become inculcated? Through the educational system, through television, through radio, through the things you take up in school. Like I said, it was a time where our people took up the technical things, law, medicine, Things like the science, agricultural engineering, real things, real sciences, real things that made you use your brain. Now y'all go to school and take up psychology, philosophy, right? Uh, 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 that's what you take up, right? You're becoming inculcated because you are being, you are adopting their philosophy and you're training, aka education, where you're trained like a dog to just basically repeat and follow and do what these people tell you to do to be a black parrot, to repeat what they say so you can get your degree, right, which is a damn Masonic term, so you can get your degree, so you can get your uh, your, your paper on the wall. You do it like a good black parrot, and then it inculcates you because now you got their mark in your forehead. You become one of them, right? Is it uh, just black youth who are becoming inculcated? No, you got Asian, East Indian, Latino, all of them are becoming inculcated in their mentality in the books they read, and the behavior that they exhibit. They're being given, being passed on that white degenerate mentality, that white trash mentality. They're being passed on that white trash mentality. Right? They swallow in the white trash, and they're becoming black trash, Asian trash, and all this other trash. Unnecessary. They're being made unnecessary. Useless people. People that look like they huddle around like garbage. Just Lord they call what they call in the society what the white man call it loitering. When they stand around they look like they loitering. They look like litter. Garbage. Things that serve no purpose. People that serve no purpose. Right? Uh do uh in in inculcated people consider themselves black? No, they don't. You look at the so-called inculcated black man, so-called Negro who's inculcated. He don't consider himself black. He considers himself a man of color, or he got this "we are the world" mentality, like we all the same, which is a lie. He gonna he gonna sit up here and lie, just so he can fit in. So now he's become them. He's become the black version of them. The trash, the people who serve no purpose. You just here taking up space. Getting high, tattooing yourself up, just eating, breathing, taking up space. No purpose whatsoever. That's real. What does uh, the future bring for the uh, unco inculcated thinker? The end. The end. Because they always give you certain the, – the way they give you in the society to think, the things they promote as progressive is always about your end. It's always it's going. It's all it's going to do is bring about your ending. That's all it's going to do. The only thing it's going to do in the society is bring about your ending, black man and black woman. All the things they promote is progressive that you follow. You understand the tattoos, the homosexuality, the lesbian, and all the things you follow that they call progressive in the society ain't going to do nothing but bring about your end. And like I said, the two thirds of our people are not going to be uh, the two thirds of our people are not going to pay attention to it. Two-thirds of our people are going to be so busy f trying to fight against the evolution because they know they have no place in the evolution. Right? They want to stay stuck in the past. Right? So two-thirds of our people are going to fight against it. That's okay. That's okay. There's nothing you can do about it. The evolution is going to take place regardless. Whether it's me or somebody else, it's going to take place. It's been long overdue. So we've come to the end of our broadcast. Join us um, Wednesday for the next broadcast. Might be doing doing the God sent people. We might be doing that broadcast. I don't know yet. But um, you know, I caution all the people that listen. Pay attention to what's going on around you. Right? Pay attention to what's going on around you. 
pay attention, thorough attention to what's going on around you, right? How you are being uh, inculcated, how you are being uh, subliminally inculcated by your mentality. So, all right. Join us February 24th, February 24th in Brooklyn, New York, for the uh, State of Mentel's, uh, for the State of Mentel's uh, um Drew God revealed. Come to the reception. Come on out. Those of you in Brooklyn, New York, or in the Jersey area, come on out. Show yourselves. Show your face. So, uh, be a part of the evolution and the reception of the state of mental. All right? Our people have no reason of bl- talking about the problem. If our people are going to talk about the problem, you have to be part of the solution. If you you can't talk about the pro you can't talk about no longer the problem if you're not being part of the solution. Straight up. The majority of our people have chose not to be to bury their head in the sand and sit on the sidelines and listen to the radio broadcast and not take part in this evolution. Like I said, those of you people, I don't take you, I don't take you seriously because you've been inculcated. The people who are not inculcated are actionary in finding our people. So that is it. I am the intellectual Nubin Minkares. This has been State of Mintel Radio. Good night.